taken the field as we welcome you to Fox College Football, sponsored by Volkswagen. Drive something bigger than yourself. In Boulder, Folsom Field for this rivalry matchup between 25th-ranked Nebraska and Colorado. And yes, Nebraska fans have bought a bunch of tickets, a lot of red here at Folsom Field. Joe Davis, Brock Heward, Bruce Feldman on the sidelines, Dean Blandino, our rules expert back in Los Angeles. It is a picture-perfect day for football with a temperature in the mid-80s, and isn't it good to have this rivalry oh. back? Now, I'm colorblind, Joe, so you tell me, what do I see in these stands? Because I know you just said we're in Boulder. This looks really red. Yeah, yeah if, you, if you take out of consideration the Colorado student section, what do you think? 70% red? It is going to be some kind of environment. Now, what a game to start the day on Fox. Army and Michigan in overtime. We'll keep it posted as that game finishes up in Ann Arbor. Colorado won the toss and will receive with Dylan Jorgensen walk on to kick. Don't often see that, especially for a home team. You're usually going to defer, put your defense on the field. But these Buffs' strength is their offense. 52 points in the season opener. Not a surprise to see Mel Tucker put his strength on the field first. 71st meeting in a series that dates back to 1898. And off we go in Boulder. Colorado to start at the 25-yard line with their quarterback Steven Montez who played one of his best games against Nebraska last season in Lincoln He's in his third season as the full-time starter been through an awful lot his third system He's managing you see coach Cheverini. He's one of the constants uh, But Jay Johnson's the offensive coordinator and he's given Steven the keys to the car more at the line of scrimmage You'll see Steven control protections lots of run checks trying to get to the right play and frankly it's invigorated the fifth-year senior. He played at his very best in this matchup a year ago, and I expect him to be aggressive this afternoon. 351 yards, three touchdowns in that Colorado win in Lincoln, 33-28. This one begins from the 25-yard line with a straight drop. Scans the field, checks it down. It's Alex Fontenot who gets popped after a gain of three by DiCaprio Boodle. This is a really talented Colorado offense, especially at the skill spots. It's an offensive line that really plays together. There's not one particular standout, but no sacks a week ago in the opener. Impressive. LaVisca Chenault will be all over the field, including Wildcat quarterback. Get the ball in your playmaker's hands. Ten catches, 177 yards in Lincoln last year, including the game-winning touchdown. And here's that check with me. Right here as he's looking at the box count, the numbers really dictating everything at the line. Fontenot started the game with a reception. Here he is on the ground for a gain of two, and it'll be third down. Made his first career start last week. Had a few touchdowns. Take a look at this Nebraska defense. Hard to find a more mammoth defensive line in all of college football. Daniels transfers from Oklahoma State, becomes a captain. Behind him, Mo Berry runs sideline to sideline as well as anybody. The fifth-year senior, also a captain. And on the back end, watch Mr. Boodle. Was tested by LaVisca Chenault an awful lot a year ago. He's going to be charged with covering down this year in this matchup as well. Third down in a quarter of the field. Montez in trouble. Dumps it off. Incomplete. And it's fourth down. Fontenot, the intended receiver. Markel DeSmoot flew up. And then a flag at the end of the play. Lamar Jackson and instead of fourth down and 25 it is first and 10 for Colorado and that's one of those plays you just saw Scott Frost he talked about his team having to learn on the road remember he's an offer here at Nebraska got to learn on the road to be smart now to Lamar's benefit here he may not have heard this whistle right now the ball bounces he may or may not have heard that whistle as loud as this environment was and Scott Frost doesn't like it he doesn't like the extra activity. I don't think he likes that call. He wants his guys to cut it loose and play hard, but what an enormous penalty. Well, the teams have traded big penalties on the opening drive of the game. Fresh set of downs from the 25. A stretch play for Fontenot. Check that. That's Jaron Mangum. Jaron Mangum with his first carry of the day. Time for a game break. Here's Mike Hill. Hey, guys. Nearly had our first major upset of this young season. Army taking number seven Michigan into overtime. Double OT, in fact. Wolverines up 24-21 when the defense comes up huge. 
second is stripping Kelvin Hopkins of the football. Michigan recovers and survives to go to 2 0 on the young year. All right, Mike, first down completion here to Tony Brown, stopped by Lamar Jackson. Really nice route there, Tony Brown, the consummate pro he's called in this building. Transfer, other guys get the name recognition. He does all the dirty work, an excellent route, putting his foot in the ground and giving Montez a chance to move those chains once again. That is the hope for the Buffs. I mean, all the talk is about Chenault, but they have a lot of other playmakers. They're confident that if a team wants to sell out to take Chenault away, they're still going to be productive. We saw it last week against South Alabama or against Colorado State. On first down, here's the screen. Back to Brown, makes a man miss. Hurdles his way into Nebraska territory. The ball comes out. But the ground forced the fumble, and it's second and short. The field, the runner was down before the ball came out. Second down. Yeah, this is Will Honus that's flying, and watch these Cornhuskers. They're going to fly all over the field, sideline to sideline. I think that right forearm is down. And ground cannot cause that fumble. Nebraska's flying. I mean, that's a, that's an energy penalty earlier, and one you just don't really ever want to have if you're Scott Frost. And obviously, an enormous penalty for real estate, the emotion in this building. But just watching them on tape a week ago as well, defensively, every one of these guys can run sideline to sideline. Second down and long. Montez will dump it down. There's the first catch of the season for Dimitri Stanley. A gain of five with a stop from Will Honus. These are the downs and distances you do not want to be in if you're Steven Montez. Jay Johnson, first-year coordinator with Mel Tucker, because this is where Nebraska and their staff, Eric Shenander, loves to be aggressive. They've been pretty basic, Joe, here early on in this opening drive. A lot of four down, not a whole lot of pressure. Well, this is where you've got to guard the football. You've got to protect that field position if you're the fifth-year senior Montez. From midfield, third down, 17. Montez into the short side. There's Brady Russell. And it'll be fourth down in about eight as Eric Lee Jr. makes another tackle. Fourth and one, easy decision. Fourth and eight, Colorado took the ball at home to begin this game for a reason. Because their offense is their strength. They're going to have to score some points today. And I think at fourth and eight, this is the right call. A veteran punter, you've got to pin this Nebraska offense back. An offense that struggled a week ago in the opener. J.D. Spielman at both ends of the spectrum in the opener and punt returns. Took one back 76 yards for a touchdown, but he also fumbled one. Alex Kinney, veteran punter, sends away a good one and a fair catch back at the three. Back at Folsom Field. Nebraska to begin its first possession from its own four. Maurice Washington swings out of the backfield, gets the corner, and bumped out of bounds near the marker. So Adrian Martinez, Brock, didn't play great last week, set such a high bar last season, huge expectations coming in for him this year, and Scott Frost said, very determined this week in practice. Well, the whole group was not on the details from the snap, really. 15 missed snaps played a big role in really discombobulating the offense. Back-to-back -back touches for Washington. He crosses the 20 with a gain of six. And there was no Washington in that first half a week ago as well. And, and just for Adrian, it was his eyes, it was his poise. And you know, 295 yards a game, freshman records, one of the best marks any freshman in college football has ever done in total yards. And just not himself a week ago. I expect him to be aggressive, and I'd expect him to run it a whole lot more than he did last week. Empty set on second and short. Martinez looks short side. His read was taken away, so he will run for the first time. Into space and a first down crossing the 30. You know, as much as he shouldered, because that's what you quarterbacks do, it all started up front with their freshman center, Cameron Jurgens. Snaps were an issue all day. Yeah, he's a converted high school tight end linebacker. Tremendous athlete. They believe he's going to be one of the greats, but he's learning on the job, learning to try to snap, and it was uncomfortable. And watch Wandale Robinson, number one. Running back, wide receiver, the freshman will be everywhere. He's the man in motion here on first down from the 33. It is Washington. With a short gain, and second and eight. How about this Colorado defense? A lot of inexperience, and they gave up over 500 yards last week, but overcome it with four takeaways. Yeah, Johnson, one of the rarities coming back with experience, he's got to be a different maker, the difference maker, most violent player up front. Landman's a hammer, the leading tackler, and on the back end, Abrams, the corner, is really going to be responsible for covering a lot of space. Martinez all day. He'll heave one with broken coverage. 
advantage. J.B. Spielman takes advantage. Makes a man miss. And a Nebraska touchdown. A 65-yard strike with blown coverage of the back end. What was the fear of Colorado and their defensive staff? The amount of time for Adrian Martinez to create. You saw the run earlier. Well, this is the pass, and this is the burden that the safety Onu, the transfer from SMU, is going to find himself in. The vertical game, and he's putting a bind, a two-on-one. And you know what? If that's a two-and-a-half second in the ball out, he's in position. But that time, unfortunately, it looked like Maddox not in position to cover for four, five, six seconds, and the ball gets behind him. Those safeties are going to be burdened if they get protection like that. There's an answer to one of the questions who will handle the place kicking duties. First one, Isaac Armstrong, who is their punter normally, hasn't kicked since he was in high school. Nebraska, one 20-yard explosive play all game last week, and they get it on the opening touchdown drive. Boulder, Colorado. I think you see why the Buffs took the ball, right? <laughs> the strength is going to be their offensive group. Going to be challenged here defensively and trying to prevent the big play. It was really the theme around here. Have a lot of eyes on Adrian, prevent the big play, but so much time. And there you see the poise. And you knew Martinez would bounce back from a rough one a week ago. Nothing, no better feeling for a quarterback than to see a receiver that open 50 yards down the field. Over the head of Katie Nixon. And Nebraska and Colorado first met in 1898. 60 years as members of the Big Seven and the Big Eight and the Big 12 together. They met every year from 1948 through 2010. We're doing things with this home and home these last couple of years. From the 25 yard line, second Colorado possession, and Colin Miller is all over Steven Montez for a loss of five. So fast. And that's just what jumped off the screen to me, the second level of this defense. And you'll see five, six different Cornhuskers play. And Montez, we saw earlier on a third down run, get to the edge of that defense. But man, Miller can run, Barry can run. You can see Doman play an awful lot today in this matchup. All of those guys kept quick at the second level. Montez to throw on second down. Underneath, there's LaVisca Chenault, his first touch of the day. He breaks two tackles and gets close to a first down. Tyron Ferguson bumps him out. I was fortunate to call this matchup a year ago, Joe, in Lincoln, and Chenault just a career day. And much like the previous staff, they know when they've got a weapon to get the ball to him in as many different ways today, and he is such a beast when he catches it. I think that's when he's most dangerous, after the catch. Third down and seven for the Buffs. Nebraska bringing pressure. It's picked up, giving Montez time, and a man leaks open out of the backfield for a first down, Alex Fontenot. Boy, that's really good. I mean, it, it, one of the critiques of Montez through the years is a little bit of panic in the pocket, right? The happy feet and just maybe the eyes moving places. That's as poised as you can be on a critical third and seven, something they've worked really hard on this offseason. It's it back to Montez in the Buffs offense from the 36 yard line. Here's Fontenot. Markel Dismuke from his safety spot brings him down, second down in the closing seconds of his first quarter. I'll tell you, that's now the 15th straight game with the turnover. One of the reasons the Cornhuskers couldn't find a win on the road last year is just giving that ball away, and that will be an opportunity for Mel Tucker and his crew. You've got to win that takeaway column. They did last week. They did last year against Nebraska. 3-0 winning the turnover battle, and 33-28 winning that game in Lincoln. Entertaining first quarter here at Folsom Field. Nebraska and Colorado off and rolling. Back after this on Fox. First quarter stats. Dominated at least in terms of Tony Artage by Nebraska, but that one turnover helping uh, level things out for Colorado. And a couple explosive plays for Nebraska as well. Something missing a week ago. Colorado, you got to continue to do this. You've got to mix and match your run, your pass. Put a lot of Montez on his shoulders to help dictate that too. Second down and six to the freshman Jaron Mango. Slips one tackler, then gets drilled by Cam Taylor Britt in front of this third down. Opening seconds of this second quarter. 
on third and five against pressure Montez steps up pocket collapsing and down he goes already the third sack of the game for Nebraska and that's unfortunate because he had Chanel they created everything in that formation three by one run that rub route Montez got to step up and put that on him. I mean, he's looking there they do that short motion he knows what he's getting coverage wise you're getting man to man and there you just got to trust yourself and then ultimately your best players have to rise to the occasion you've got to give them that chance today I think the first time really feeling the impact of this Nebraska rush Alex Kinney one of the stars of the early going in this game now three very good punts Spielman will let it bounce over his head Wow down at the five a 60 yarder from a guy who broke his collarbone in this matchup last year there was an eight year stretch final eight years of the big eight where this matchup decided the conference championship more or less 1988 through 95 meeting up again here in Boulder first time in a decade they've played here as the freshman Wandale Robinson comes into the backfield and has a first down gain of about five true freshman from Frankfort Kentucky who is the nation's number one all-purpose recruit and all-purpose is a perfect word for the way they want to use it a little bit more than a runner in high school over 117 touchdowns Gatorade State Player of the Year and the first from the state of Kentucky to have an opportunity to be a letterman for Nebraska He's the motion man on second down. Mo Washington back there next to Martinez. Bubbles around Taylor. And Washington gets a first down. Yeah, you can keep track this afternoon of those yards between the tackle. That Scott Frost, Troy Walters, his offensive coordinator, they will not go away and deviate from it because it continues to open up these edges. And that's Davian Taylor who can run. And I complimented him earlier on keeping contain that outside arm free, but it's such an enormous advantage outside the hashes for Nebraska today speed wise averaging 12 yards per play so far including that 65 yard touchdown from Martinez to Spielman on their first drive first and 10 from the 18 they go back to the ground Washington with penetration this time they try to go between the tackles where there's much less of an advantage and that was a really nice play there Terrence Lang on Farney at the right tackle. Just a one-on-one, -on -one, he wins. That's what the run game a week ago looked like against South Alabama. 44 rushes, just 98 yards. For a team that was top 30 in the country running the football last year. Here's Martinez pulling on the read play. Dives forward, third and short. <laughs> Talking about the issues on the ground last week, just over two yards per carry against South Alabama. Too cute. Way too many formations. You're seeing them a little bit more stagnant today, trying to get a read in the field for the defense. Got ahead of themselves in the opener a week ago. Facing third and two. Straight ahead, Washington. He's got no shot. Akil Jones, who's mostly just played special teams his first couple of seasons, comes up with a big play here. Yeah, and this is just your right guard, your right tackle. This was some of the challenge a week ago, just not getting to the second level. And Colorado is going to move. Tyson Summers, the D coordinator, knows he can't be stagnant. And when they get an opportunity, whether it's a slant, whether it's a run blitz like that, against a big physical Nebraska offensive line, they want to give them moving targets to hit. Not sitting ducks. First Nebraska punt. Isaac Armstrong with the freshman Dimitri Stanley waiting back. Colorado coming after it. And that is going to be a rough it. Daniel Arias just drills Isaac Armstrong. We've had many key running penalties. Not just running Defense into the kicker, but still it's going to be enough for a first down. Yardage results in the first down. I know you do a wonderful job of keeping score in baseball. You got this fancy program on your yeah. iPad. You do so good. You know what this is for me in my stat column, my keeping score? That's a giveaway. You're off the field, right? Your offense is getting the ball. It's a turnover defensively. I mean, that's just a that's just a mistake, and, and it's an effort mistake, and you're trying to get after it if you're Mel Tucker, and you know you've got to, you've got to win the special teams phase. Can't play a neutral, but you're now giving Nebraska the ball back. That's a giveaway. Again, we talked about it last week. Such a clean game Mel Tucker's team played 
But already three penalties and a couple of them big. Welcome to rivalry emotion. From the 30 yard line. Martinez with the first down pass play. He's got all day and finds Robinson for a first down into Colorado territory on a gain of 25. Now that one to the explosive column. Explosive player, explosive play. And once again, this sets up by the protection. Compare and contrast Montez. Right, he's been hit and harassed on most of his passes. Adrian, plenty of time to step up and into the pocket and deliver. Quickly in Robinson's hands again. This time, Nate Landman flies over to stop him. Colorado's leading tackler. Played a huge game in the win against Nebraska last year. Again, you just see from a play calling standpoint, see the hands on the hips? Nebraska reads it. They want more and more of that. And thus, sideline to sideline, utilizing all 53 yards, because that guy coming downhill is a monster. Martinez again all day, straight to Spielman for a first down. Boy, and if you give a quarterback that's that talented that much time to just stand there, you are in trouble. And this is a four-man rush. This is not a three-man rush. You're bringing a fourth rusher there into play. But a guy that struggled to get into rhythm a week ago, Adrian, yeah, this is pretty darn simple read right over the ear of the linebacker. And no threat in the pocket. Eight of his first eight, really comfy. Here comes Mills. He gets upended by Maddox because when it happens enough, even when the snap is good, it's still in the back of your head as a quarterback. There's no question. And you've got so much to do in this system as a QB, so much to read in your RPO game, to read down the field with the safeties, and they love him. Scott Frost loves him. Troy Walters love him. They believe he's going to be the next All-American. And you see him down on the field pregame, you see why they love him. A tremendous athlete. And I think wonderful to see him bounce back after a rough week. Spielman motions across the formation on second and goal. Martinez looking in zone. Now I'll tuck it down, trying to run around the corner. He gets a block from Washington and a touchdown. It was a pass play to the left. It wound up a run play to the right for a Husker touchdown. And if South Alabama fans happen to be watching this game, they're like, man, I didn't see any of this last week. I didn't see a quarterback this confident, this comfortable. He could have thrown it. He could have thrown it right there to Austin Allen, but he's heard all week what his coach has reinforced. You came here to run the ball. You didn't just come here to throw it. You came here as a winner, as a tough dude, and to run the ball and do damage, and that's exactly what he's done in this first half. And on a drive that started back inside their own 10-yard line, they go 95 yards and make it 14-0, trying to get off to a 2-0 start, trying to get their first road win under Scott Frost. See nothing Huskers after a long touchdown drive engineered by Adrian Martinez who is perfect so far other than the fumble yeah perfect throwing it over 205 total yards and really outside of that fumble Joe this game you could be looking at 21 nothing but it was also 14 point deficit a year ago in Lincoln where Colorado responded they're gonna have to do the same on this drive William Krista handling the kickoff duties punches that one to the end zone first down and 10 for Colorado it feels like a big drive here for the Buffs, down 14-0. But it can't be a panic drive. Montez, 8 of 10 so far, 51 yards. Pressure coming from the near side, then they back off. Montez with time, he'll tuck it. He pops and crumbles down after a gain of five. Good stop by Markel Dismuke. <laughs> Fun talking with him yesterday. Confident quarterback cocky basketball player. Isn't it crazy? He said he could play on the yeah. CU basketball team without question, and he actually said he still plays so much ball that sometimes his football ball handling, you see it there, he was like trying to jump cut, right, crossover, that ball will get away from him. He is one cocky basketball player. Mike McIntyre, when he was recruiting him, saw him drop 28 points in the first quarter of a basketball game, and it included a 360 dunk. Second and five, off play action. He rolls, his eyes downfield. He gets intercepted by Lamar Jackson. The senior out of Elk Grove, California, plucks it out of the air and gives it back to the Huskers in Colorado territory. 
And what a great play by the boundary corner. Nebraska, one of the defenses that will play a corner either into the boundary or to the field, and he baits them. You can see Lamar's right there. He's baiting. Watch his eyes. No panic. He sees the whole route develop. He knows what's coming. And he wants Montez to throw that. He wants to stay at a depth that really forces the hand of that quarterback. And when I said don't panic on this drive, that's a panic decision. That's trying to get too much all back in one play and a senior that makes him pay. First time Nebraska's had a drive begin outside its own 15-yard line. 43 they start with a trick play here comes J.D. Spielman Spielman cuts it upfield and gets eight how many plays outside the hash just how many different ways can you do it keep them honest inside right take the body shots inside between the tackles but how many different guys between Wandell and Spielman and Martinez can do damage out in the open field where there is the single biggest mismatch on this field today and that is the skill speed in Nebraska Got a pretty good mismatch here down to the bottom of the screen with a tight end Jack Stoll who is 6'4 Makai Blackman who is barely six foot Martinez looking in that direction but it's out of the backfield Mills lowers the shoulder first down to the 15 and a gain of 20. Yeah you got this sense a week ago when the Colorado State Rams had over 500 yards of offense and you saw much of this same get to the flat really test lamb and Van Deese probably worth mentioning the Buffaloes without Carson Wells and that's a huge loss for them defensively he's out with a concussion he's an edge player that has a little bit more speed but once again you see Nebraska taking advantage of the perimeter. From the 15 yard line, it's Mills. Tucked down at the line of scrimmage by Taylor. And this, I think, is what the country felt preseason with so much of the expectation and anticipation for Nebraska. The top 25 team with just four wins a season ago. Back to back losing seasons, and yet there was so much, I think, because of Adrian. The resume of Scott Frost in year two with the program and his winning attitude. This is the kind of football that I think people expected to see a week ago. And all the reports out of camp were so positive across the board. Washington cuts it upfield. Lamon helps bring him down, and it's third down. Mikhail Onu also up from the secondary. He's been busy. Yeah. Too busy. And that speaks to, I think, some of this defensive line and just some of the challenges that Mel Tucker has year one, filling some spots with grad transfers and late signees and just trying to patchwork put a front together. Tough matchup today. And that said, how good has Nebraska's O line been in both phases, both pass blocking and run blocking? Third down and seven. Robinson in motion. Zone. Nobody following him across the field. Martinez knows that. Hands it off. Here's Washington trying to get the edge. Not going to this time. Maddox bumps him out, and it's fourth down. And remember, some kicking challenges for Nebraska. And there's a good play by Maddox. And some of that secondary speed. But this is <laughs> there's some nervous energy, I think, on that sidelines. Not even knowing who the kicker would be yesterday when we sat down with the staff. It'll be Isaac Armstrong. We saw attempt a couple of uh, extra points. He is the punter kicking for the first time since he was a high schooler. That means a new holder as well because Armstrong normally the holder. Noah Vedrill backup quarterback a wide snap. Vedrill does a nice job to catch it and put it down and poke through by Armstrong. 26 yards and a 17 nothing Husker lead. They've turned it into a home game the Huskers have and they lead 17 nothing as we go to the break and we get you to Rob Stone in Los Angeles for the State Farm halftime show. First half stats brought to you by Geico. Zero rushing yards for Colorado. Thorough dominance for Nebraska and a 17-0 Husker lead as we get you ready for the second half. Welcome you back inside. Joe Davis and Brock Heward. And I mean, really, in, in every phase of the game, it was all Nebraska first 30 minutes. Yeah, you kind of felt that meeting with Scott Frost yesterday. They were confident in this matchup. Could take advantage of some of their speed and explosiveness. It was so missing a week ago against South Alabama. This was the opening drive of the game and look at the amount of time Adrian had to really take advantage of that secondary down the field. Spielman on the other end of it. Just an enormous explosive play right out the gate. Something they didn't get going a week ago. 
Adrian distributing everywhere. Mo Washington with yet another explosive play. 225 yards for Adrian. Total offense in the first half. And the defense just as successful and suffocating. That entire front seven wreaking havoc on Montez. Three sacks already in that first half. And then continuing what they did a week ago. And that's taking the ball away. I thought the one decision of Montez in the first half really trying to do too much. And Lamar Jackson makes him pay. And so the first six quarters of the season for Nebraska, they've got seven sacks and six takeaways. And in terms of offense, they've already almost matched their total from last week. Adrian Martinez has been perfect through the air. And they'll get it to open this second half, what feels like a must-stop possession for Colorado's defense if they're going to have a shot. Let's go down to Bruce. Joe, I just talked to Mel Tucker and I said, what do you do with Adrian Martinez? He's really going off. He said, you know what? We just got to contain, be more mindful, especially on third down of the runs. We got to really settle down. I said, well, how do you get LaVisca going? He said, listen, LaVisca's hungry. He wants the ball and there's a lot of stuff we feel like we can take advantage of based on some looks we saw from them in the first half. All right, Bruce, Chenault, four catches for 24 yards in the first half. And it's not like Montez was bad, the nope. one interception in there, 13 of 18, but not a whole lot of chunk plays. I, I think like any quarterback, he needs the help of the rest of the supporting cast in, in a run game, and there was no balance in that first half. And if you become one-dimensional against the speed and a bunch of the veteran players in the front seven in Nebraska, that's not going to be an efficient afternoon for him. Martinez with a run to the 29-yard line. He ran listen. it for 45 yards in that first half, led the way. You told us off at the top, you figured he'd more aggressive run the ball. And that already his seventh rush of the game, but you know, paying off what Bruce heard from Mel, watch the edges, right? Just trying to contain, not rushing behind him, keep him between the tackles. Washington trying to get to the edge. He hops back and gets stopped by Aaron Maddox, third and one. <laughs> Very loud. Never had much to cheer about. On third and one, they'll sneak it. Just the third play under center under Scott Frost outside of plays to run the clock out. Smart play, too. Mr. Farniak, the right tackle getting right behind Adrian Peterson. With the push there to ensure the first down coming right out, and Scott Frost. Troy Walters, like a lot of folks, script their opening plays, also make their adjustments at halftime. And not a ton of not, not a ton to make. Four drives in that opening half, three scores, the one fumble, and up and down this field. Behind an offensive line that was dominant in the first half. And they give Martinez all kinds of time again. A little bit out of the reach of Washington. That was his first miss. And here's a little adjustment from Colorado. They've been bringing a fourth defender. It hasn't really impacted anyway, so this time they just rush three. They drop eight in the coverage. And a near miss there, the only misfire of the afternoon for Martinez. Yeah, literally the only <laughs> incompletion. And again, as we talked about coming out of the break, Nebraska's had no problem getting big plays. Mustafa Johnson can't bring Martinez down. He's got room to run. And instead of third and eight, it'll be third and about six. Once again, Tyson Summers, the defensive coordinator for Mel Tucker, you saw him a bit earlier, rushes three. Says, we're not getting home anyway with four, so you might as well have an extra defender, some more eyes trying to contain Martinez. And you can see, I think, give it some frustration there. You drop eight in the coverage, you play zone, you really do not expect a 15-yard run. Opening drive of the second half for Nebraska. Third down and six. Colorado's showing pressure. They bring four and get home. Ball in the air. It is a fumble that Martinez gets back on top of. Makai Blackman on a corner blitz comes in and makes it a mess. Page out of Nebraska's playbook with some secondary pressure. Blackman coming right off the edge. And Adrian just doesn't sense it. He hasn't been hitting that pocket anyway all day, but he gets it really from, from both ends here. A look he was anticipating, the coverage dropping out, it doesn't. 
And unfortunately for Colorado, a ball that bounced right back into Martinez's hands. So that they get the stop that they Huge. had to have. And now look to set up a return for Katie Nixon. That is a good punt. Angled out of bounds, keep it away from Nixon. Isaac Armstrong get the job done. So Colorado back to offense, down 17-0 here in the 71st meeting between the Huskers and the Buffs. One of the great traditions in college football, the Ralphie runout here at Folsom Field. Colorado's first drive of the second half. Got to get something going. What kind of changes did they make coming out of the break? Nebraska has been so fast flow, you have got to change the pocket, move the pocket, reverses, get on the perimeter. Alex Fontenot makes a nice cut and gets six. It's a misdirection, right? You just got to get those Nebraska eyes in the front going one way and making it pay the other. And that a very positive run for a crew. Thanks to three sacks from Nebraska, had a big fat zero, not just on the scoreboard. You don't see it much, also in the rushing column after 30 minutes. For a Nebraska run defense that has been an issue, they're 124th nationally two years ago. They were 107th last year, but so much bigger, as you've touched on, so much better depth up front. Shut the run game down in the first half. Here's a jet sweep to Dimitri Stanley. It's a nice block from Nixon and a first down. Able to get to the edge with some speed from the freshman. And that's it. You've got to get out there. And then maybe a jet sweep with a little reverse off of it. You've just got to do it against a fast flow crew. And this Nebraska defense through a game and a half playing as fast as anybody. You've got to misdirect them. Montez against pressure throws behind Nixon. A couple guys out there open with pressure coming from that side, unable to hook up. Yeah, he's a guy. I mean, LaVisca is the obvious, but KD is right behind him. I mean, those have got to be one, two in touches in the final 30 minutes. If you're going to get back into this game, if you're going to make something against a fast defense happen, those two guys from DeSoto, Texas, have got to have a say in it. And Nixon had a big cushion and just stepped out of bounds. Looked like he had an opportunity at a first down there, but instead it's third and four. Here comes Chenault crossing the defense for a first down. Been more active today than he was even a week ago. And then I think they're going to guard a little bit and protect that shoulder as you see now a little tempo from the Buffaloes. Defended by Boodle here to the bottom of the screen. They run away. Jaron Mangum stopped by Colin Miller. <laughs> Converted defensive end out of Fishers, Indiana. Eric Shenander, the defensive coordinator, late last season said, look, a couple things. We need help inside. Don't have much depth there. And you are probably not going to be an outside linebacker defensive end at the next level. And so Miller was all in making that switch. And in his first year as a starter now. Second down and long. Montez throws. He's got Nixon, who's got space and tripped up crossing midfield. That close to breaking a huge one. He'll settle for 22. Yeah, KD could easily comfortably put the other uniform on on the other side and fit so well in what they do. Playing just in space, making one, two, three guys miss. That's what you're going to have to do today. All right, LaVisca, KD, the rest of them got to understand with the amount of pursuit that you're seeing, it's not just good enough to break one tackle. You've got to make multiple people miss. Trick play coming here. They get it in Nixon's hands. Montez delivers a block. Not a good enough one. And a loss of three as Ben Stilley stayed home. And if you want to draw up a Nebraska player, he, he also looks like he played in the 80s or 90s. Oh. Put a neck roll on him and a little bigger pads. He's 6'5", he's 295. He's a self-made man. He was a leading sacker last year as well with five and a half. But that is textbook. You want to play containment? You want to let your buddies help you out? Yeah, he got to dominate a quarterback, but you can't do it better than he just did. 
Second down, there's Russell, the tight end, dragging the defender for a Colorado first down. The ball comes out. Nebraska's on it, but was it out before Russell was marked down? Uh, it appears this. Yeah, that ball is definitely out. Does Nebraska get control of it as they're fighting underneath? I don't think there's any doubt. Look at the 60-inch punch right here. It's going to come in and just punch that ball out. But Colorado actually recovered it. Markel Desmuke punched it out of there. Somehow, Russell was able to fight it away from Sullivan. Look at that short punch. They work on that first thing in practice every day. Staple of Eric Shenander's defenses through the years. First down and 10 at the Nebraska 36. Montez back to throw, looking long, heaving towards the end zone. Tony Brown can't pull it in. Had his hands on it over Lamar Jackson, but couldn't hang on in its second and 10. That's the one-on-one -on -one vertical shot you wanted. Right, you've been searching for these today. Ample time as this offense has been on the field a little bit more in the second half. Tremendous coverage by Lamar. The ball goes up into the sunshine. And he, Tony does everything right. Absolutely everything right, but unable to finish that touchdown. Great throw. Give your receiver a chance. Tony knows he's got to come down with that ball. On second down, it's a sweet play right side with room for a first down. That is the seldom used Jalen Jackson. His first touch of the day goes for 13, and he got a great block from KD Nixon. I like that you're getting away from the chaos. You're not winning inside. Right? You can't win between the tackles. Get out to the perimeter, but a good adjustment in the second half. Swing it out to Mangum. Makes a man miss. Jaron Mangum downhill to the 10. I like the tempo right back to the football for Montez and crew. Hustle up to the line of scrimmage into the short side. Manga made the first man miss. Stayed on his feet for the touchdown. The freshman out of Detroit gets the buffs on the board late in the third. Running through the arms, the true freshman did of the redshirt senior captain, Muhammad Barry. One of the rare occasions in the run game where that Colorado who wants to be physical, who wants to run downhill, who does that team period under Mel Tucker every Tuesday and Wednesday, full pads, full go, breaking tackles, making plays, and bringing the stadium to life on the Colorado side. Extra point from James Stefano. Makes it a 17-7 game. Yeah, Mangum, the bigger back, the true freshman. Here's Barry, the senior captain. And on one of the real rare occasions today, I had a little bit of a block. I think that throws Barry just getting to the second level. It doesn't have to be perfect. Right, just enough of a body there for Russell. Just enough of a body for Lenat. Just get a piece of these guys so they, your running backs, have the opportunity to square it up and run with some force. Stefano to kick it. Dangerous Wandale Robinson waits back for Nebraska. And a good kick, skillfully done, keeping it away from Robinson. Is one of the first times they've been able to get up this crowd. From Colorado's perspective. Martinez off play action. He'll dump it off. Flying out of there to break it up is Taylor. It's an incomplete pass off of the hands of Mills. You mentioned this kid can really run. Shot out of a cannon right there. And he's the one. We mentioned him three different times today. He's the one that ran his mouth a little bit and just said, hey, we want to make Adrian a passer. We feel like that gives us an opportunity. And you know what you've not seen from Adrian in the second half? A lot of run. A real and priority in that first half. Gone away from it here in the second half. And he was 9 of 9 through the air in the first half. He's 1 of 5 in the second. On second and 10, I look to throw it again. Into the short side, Robinson. That is going to be a face mask. And that was a killer. Oh, is that a killer? First of foul, face mask. Defense number 25. 15 yards from the end of the run. Automatic first down. He said this week in the, in the papers that, boy, he wasn't good enough tackling in the open field. And 
Now, that's just an effort, right? I mean, there's nothing flagrant about that. He's trying to do all he can to bring down the very dangerous true freshman Robinson on the other side. And unfortunately, instead of grabbing cloth, those hands reach for the obvious face mask. Eighth penalty today. They had four week one. First down and long, some room, but it closed quickly for Diedrich Mills, and Nate Lamont got his 10th tackle of the day to bring this third quarter to a close. A late touchdown from Colorado here in the third, making things interesting as we move to the fourth in the 71st meeting between Nebraska and Colorado. Fourth quarter coming up on Fox. I was looking there, but not yet pulled the trigger. And credit there to one of the players we highlighted in the open, Abrams, the big long corner outside. You can see Martinez wants to go. Another line stunt. Well executed there and keeping enough contained to force Martinez to throw it away. But you flank him out there for a reason. Eventually, you've got to give a big target an opportunity to win a one-on-one -on -one ball. Third down, 16. Martinez hits the crosser Spielman who can't hang on with the coverage from Chris Miller and the punt team will come out. It's going to be one that Adrian's going to look at. I think he has a chance to his tight end. Pretty good protection. You've seen it. Colorado through line stunts at least affect Adrian a little bit. Certainly much more than he did in that first half. An opportunity to fit one into the tight end. Adrian decides not to, protects the football, the drop forces the punt. The dangerous Nixon waits back, hasn't had an opportunity today because Isaac Armstrong's been really good with his placement. Fair catch, bounces at the five, and Armstrong's fantastic day continues, pinning Colorado down at the four. Early on fourth quarter, two score game in Boulder. Looked like Nebraska was going to run away with it. They led 17-0 at halftime. They had the ball to open the second half. Colorado's defense has sparked a turnaround in this game. It's 17-7, and the Buffs have it again with 14-36 left. And the guys in white charging their fans who have traveled here so very well to make some noise with the Buffaloes backed up. Steven Montez, 7 of 10 in this second half. Good balance distributing the ball all over the place. They're going to open with a trick play. They've got Nixon behind the D. He's going to go. The game changes in the blink of an eye. Flicker from Steven Montez to KD Nixon. And now James Stefano for the extra point. And it's a three point game on the longest play from scrimmage in Colorado history. Two things to watch, Joe. When you run a flea flicker, you've got to have tremendous patience. You're going to see the safety dismute come all the way in. You're going to see Dixon have enough patience. But you've got to sell this just a little bit. Sell it just a little bit. And by doing so, oh, look at the green grass in Montez. You've got somebody that open. What you cannot do is overthrow it. Just let your playmakers have a chance. I think we just talked about this in the third quarter. Chenault and KD, two best offensive players you have. And they finally got a vertical opportunity. The guts of the kid out of El Paso to just throw a dime. And it was 14 points they overcame in Lincoln a year ago. It was 17 zippo with no life. 
but it's Montez, it's Chanel, it's Dixon, it's an offense that has responded in the second half. Washington, a block, hits the sideline, stays on his feet, uses his speed, goodbye, Mo Washington strikes right back. 75-yard lightning strike. That is otherworldly speed. I love college football, man. <laughs> I really do. These athletes in space, in the amount of speed, but watch his buddies. Look at the blocks out in front of Washington. Not one, not two, but all three Cornhuskers helping your buddy out so he can explode on the scene. And an explosion in this game. 14 points in the span of 27 seconds. Nebraska back up by two scores. Having any fun yet? <laughs> uh, yes. Wow. Speed, man. There is no substitute for it. Mel Tucker is going to continue to recruit more of it to Boulder. Scott Frost, in a very short time, has done his part between Washington, Robinson. That's where the game is today. Get your playmakers the ball in space. And LaVisca Chenault back there to return, implored to take a knee by Smith. And Nebraska had 50 yards total the previous four drives. They got 75 on that one play. Colorado back at it. Fontenot makes a nice cut and gets five on first down. Colin Miller with a stop. All three timeouts. Nebraska's got one. Plenty of time. Stick to the plan. Some of the some of the adjustments you made in the second half. Mix and tempo inside outside jet sweeps stretching the field horizontally and vertically to get a defense that was so downhill in the first half get them on the heels a little bit in the second frame. Fake the font no Montez will dump it to him what a catch and then spins his way for close to a first down through the arms of Muhammad Barry he's got enough. Back-to-back, -back, very good plays by the first-year starter. Big time. And Montez, I think, was expecting him to just sit down on that route right in front of Barry. He doesn't. Makes an incredible adjustment. First down from the 36. It's time they motion Fontenot out. Opening space for a quarterback draw, but the defensive line fighting off blocks. And Khalil Davis bringing him down at the line of scrimmage. Yeah, and the big old bouncy grizzly bear in there, 79 as well. I mean, this D line, the starting front, goes 970 pounds between the three. Daniels had such a beat on that as well. Very difficult to fool the fifth year captain. Second down, 10. Montez steps up. Broken coverage. There goes another big play. Jalen Jackson inside the 10 first and goal. 57 yards. Now this is again on the safeties. This is just a, a breakdown. You can see the second line of defense readjusting the route, passing it off to the safety. And that's just a miss, a miss in communication. That time Taylor bit there on the back end of it. Excuse me, Eric Lee trying to chase it down. He's playing for the injured William. That's a bust. Mangum gaping hole. Touchdown, Colorado. Back to within a score. What a roller coaster ride here in Boulder in the fourth quarter. It's like you took your Red Bull and dumped it out all over this game over the last five minutes. I mean, it was kind of sleepwalking through the middle part of the game. My goodness, as things have things turned up or what? Three point game with 12 19 left. Explosive play after explosive play after explosive play, and whatever you can do. 
I can do better. And then I credited the Nebraska blockers on the perimeter. Look at the Buffaloes to a man helping their buddy out to put six more on the board. Three touchdowns over the last seven plays in this game. 246 yards in those seven plays. The senior saying to the true freshman, welcome to college football. Welcome to rivalry. Isn't this fun? Man. I mean, Colorado, Colorado State, a big rivalry as well. But that atmosphere in Denver, hard to compare it to what we've seen today. Mills motions out. Martinez whips it into traffic. And a short gain on first down. For more on Tucker, here's Bruce. Joe, to follow up on what Brock just said about poise, that was the thing that really jumped out at me when I talked to him right before the start of the third quarter. He was so positive and really just seemed like, you know what, he, he rattled off a bunch of things they need to do, but was very calm. He's like, we just need to settle down. There's a lot of stuff here we can take advantage of. And pretty much everything he said right before the third quarter seems to have happened. And a defensive-minded guy, of course. While the offense has stalled on the show the last few minutes, it was his defense that turned the game around. On second down, Martinez to stall, who gets drilled by Taylor. And it's third and long for Nebraska. Well, you've called his name uh, a half dozen times today. And he's one of the guys that can handle the speed on the perimeter. He's a 10, 500 meter. Came to football late in life. But he's a guy that in that space outside the hash marks as they've gone to more of this big nickel defense, they call it Penny, he's been the factor. Washington comes in on third and eight. Two to snap it. They just barely get it off. Martinez in trouble. The ball is out. Got it. Mustafa Johnson jarred out of there. And NJ Fonnell came up with it. Hey, Lamb is in the student section. Remember that pocket in the first half? Two, three, four, five seconds just sitting back there. Been a very different story. College football's leading attacker of the quarterback's pressure. Last year with 50, it was that guy, Johnson, with eight and a half sacks, too. And that time, the biggest play yet in this game that's gone back and forth and back and forth. And just a different set of urgency from that Buffalo defense here in the second half. 10.50 left to go. Second fumble recovery today, by the way, for N.J. Fonnell. And watch Chenault here to the top of your screen in that bunch. Here comes Mangum. Into the teeth of the defense, shut down by Ben Stilley. Second and long. Get in that look. All right, Jay Johnson's up in the booth, and a nice play by Stilley, the offensive coordinator. You get in that look because you want to see what Nebraska's going to do defensively. I promise you in the next 10 minutes and 30 seconds, you're going to see that formation, and based on the look that they just got, you are going to see a shot, something to a playmaker down the field. That is a setup a play for the final 10 minutes. Second and nine. They boot him this time. Turns his shoulders. In trouble. Montez heaves one out of bounds. Able to keep it alive long enough to spoil it. Third and nine. You know what young quarterbacks don't do? That. Montez, his first year as a starter, I don't think he makes that play. I think it goes the other way. Instead, he knows the clock's run out. Got pressure. Cannot afford a negative play here. Let's play another day. Throw it away and make this one count. Well within Stefano's field goal range. Third down and nine for Montez in the box. Here's that formation again. With Chenault, the lone receiver to the top. Now Stanley joins him. Here comes pressure. Montez hits Stanley. One-handed grab. First down. Goodness, is there some embarrassment of riches the playmakers in this second half? Give your guy a chance. As a quarterback, it's what you want to do in these big moments. Just give your guy a chance. And if they come through with a spectacular catch, all the better. 
First down and goal. Here comes Mangum. That play gets shut down immediately. Alex Davis, the man they call Ace, breaking through to drop Mangum for a loss. Yeah, he splits the tight ends there. You see Brady Russell give him a little tap right there on the helmet. Probably that's me. Just got beat. In a one-on-one -on -one situation, Davis, the better man in that matchup. So second and goal at the 10, not an easy area to call plays. They're going to move Montez out. First look at the Wildcat, LaVisca should all ready to take it. Here he comes, left side, LaVisca cuts it upfield into the arms of Will Honus. He continues to fight down to the two where it's third and goal. Grown man strength. The guy that credits the trampoline in the backyard for giving him the immense leg strength. We've seen this today, carrying Cornhuskers. Spotted at the three, third down and goal for Colorado. Midway through this fourth quarter. They put it in Montez's hands to the end zone. It's broken up by Lamar Jackson. Intended receiver Tony Brown. And here comes the field goal team with a chance to tie. Now, a lot of credit to Montez in the second half of giving his guys a chance. That time, throws too flat. And the fifth-year senior, Lamar Jackson, can sense it and feel it the entire way. That's a ball that's either got to be thrown all the way to the boundary or up in the air. And I think Montez knows it. So a relative chip shot here for the 32-year-old place kicker out of Australia, James Stefano. Out of the hole to the punter, Kinney. From down 17-0 to a tie game in the fourth. What a great game here in Boulder. Tied at 24. Nebraska led 17-0 coming out of the break and had the ball to begin the second half. Mondale Robinson back to return this kick. Placement of these kicks has been spot on today from Stefano. On third and seven. Given time again. He'll take off. And Martinez with a stiff arm, a first down and more. That had gone away for most of the second half. It was a big part of the game early on, and here it produces 17. Surprisingly disappeared. This is who you are. You're an eye back playing quarterback when you need to be. And there's the protection, nobody getting home, no effective line stunt, and there's a little stiff arm as well. This is game time. This is winning time. This is when you've got to do whatever it takes, and for Adrian, he's got to trust that running ability. From the 45, back to the ground, Washington. Room off the right side. Gallup in his way into the secondary, making a cut down to the 14. 31 yards for Maurice Washington. First and 10 for Nebraska. I don't know. I'm having these flashbacks to the 80s and 90s right now of just all the star power in the difference makers. And you saw it with Adrian running. Here is, here is Washington, and this is so dangerous. 100-yard receiving game a year ago. 100-yard rushing game as a true freshman a season ago. And a guy that's going to be doing that for a long time in Lincoln. 145 yards for the sophomore. From the 15-yard line. They've got Mills in the game at running back now. He's got it. Crunched at the 10. <laughs> Nate Landman. That's why they call him the hammer. Wow. Why don't we just listen to this one? A little help there from John Van Deest. The second down and five, and it bears repeating that Nebraska's kicker situation is not a good one. Got their punter handling the place kicking duties today. Second and five, a bubble screen incomplete. Tight. A tight throw. Not many of them from the kid that's a that's a captain as a is a sophomore. He's looking at his hands a little bit. Maybe the ball was a little slick, didn't get a great grip, but you got to secure that. That's a play that Scott Frost, you got to get into your playmaker's hands. 
That is Armstrong, normally the punter. He's been the kicker today. One for one. Could the game be on his shoulders? 6-21 left. Got to keep the play alive here if you're Adrian Martinez. It's what you do best. Washington motions out. It's a quarterback draw. Martinez lunging. We'll see where they spot it. It is going to be very close. Is it first and goal or is it fourth and inches? First down and goal for the Huskers. That was all one-two right there. That's why Scott Frost says, I will ride with this kid. Good job. Right at the point of attack. You see a helmet on a helmet. And Ooh, that left forearm, that is going to be the key. The runner was short of the line to gain. As a result, it will be fourth down with a half yard to go at the five and a half yard line. And fourth a decision down. here where you have to bake in the fact that you don't trust your kicker. Saw the QB sneak earlier. Right, we saw the push. You believe in those guys in the middle of your line. It was Farniak, the right tackle, who comes behind Martinez to push him even further. He played that earlier in a short yardage situation. It's a call you make, man. You believe in your people around you. you go for it on the road. They're going to go out of the gun. Fourth down, less than one. Martinez straight ahead. First down, charging forward. Touchdown, Nebraska. <laughs> And with 5.49 left to go, the Huskers jump back in front. And there's a big old left guard, Trent Hickson, who's going to pull right in front of Martinez here and pave the way in just no penetration. That's all you're thinking in that moment. No penetration, no penetration. Get your pads down and finish. You see Jack Stoll, the big tight end. He's also got a one-on-one -on -one block right at the point of attack. That's all I want to. That is a more than likely a quarterback that told head coach, put the ball in my hands. Extra point from Armstrong is good, and it's 31-24 Huskers with 5.49 to go. I think when you've got a backup to a backup kicker in the game, that defined that, that process for you. And you believe in your quarterback. Too. Right, it's both, right? You, undefined kicking situation and a Heisman candidate at quarterback. LaVisca Chenault has his hands on it. And LaVisca Chenault into the second level of the defense. Chenault has it stripped from behind. Cam Taylor Britt knocked it away. Who wants it at the bottom of that pile? There is a flag down as well. Who's got it? Nebraska or Colorado? Who knows what's going on down there? You don't want to know. Buff signaling they've got it. Nebraska not conceding anything yet. Continue to peel away the layers of the onion. Still no signal. Nebraska football! Forced by Cam Taylor Britt. After the play was over. And recovered running into a Nebraska coach 15 yard penalty first down it was the takeaway a week ago this Taylor Britt kids making his mark a sack a fumble a pick a week ago and never giving up on the play Joe I had a coach who loved to preach whoever plays the hardest longest wins walk on getting it done 535 to go Colorado has all three timeouts Washington Landman is there along with Terrence Lane then John Van Dees third down and long and that was probably a too cute of a first down call Scott Frost words did too much a week ago probably a little bit too cute in that situation especially considering the previous drive they go 75 something yards all on the ground Penalty set him behind, now third and 15. Quarterback draw. 
Martinez gets popped and thrown down by Landman. So despite the turnover on the kickoff return, a three and out pitched by the Colorado defense. Uh, not fooling that guy. He's going to sniff it out as he has many times today. And I'll tell you what else that first down call did. It stopped the clock. Kind of a boomer bust play, a lot of risk. I'm sure Scott Frost is going to say, hey, we're going for it, man. We're trying to finish that game and go up two scores. But credit Colorado with an enormous three and out after the giveaway. Armstrong has been very good punting today. Hasn't given Nixon an opportunity to return one. It's another good one. Nixon this time has an opportunity, but quickly cut down. Isaiah Stalbert, another walk on on special teams with a tackle. And the Husker Nation trying to rise to the occasion in the building. The Buffalo crowd is had plenty to cheer about in this second half as well. What a ball game in Boulder. Another chapter in this great rivalry. This one turning into a classic. Tony Brown takes it on the sweep, and Khalil Davis brings him down. A loss of a few on the first play of the drive. You're thinking at 315 pounds, certainly a jet sweep is going to get outside that containment, right? You're too big. You're there to stuff to run inside. Well played. Wide open underneath KD Nixon to get back a bunch of those yards and then some, setting up a third down and short. That's called the LaVisca Chenault effect. Two Nebraska defenders staying deep. Plenty of green grass, smart decision. And it's Nixon today with the bulk of the receiving yards. Five catches, 140 now with the attention on Chenault. And they will go wildcat. This time Chenault by himself. Better not get penetration. Here he comes straight ahead. He's able to surge for a first down. A gain of four on third and two. His yards after contact. I mean, he's got a few touches, but I mean, every, it's not falling forward. It's carrying defenders forward. That is a grown man. Inside the three minute mark, Montez will quickly get rid of it to Brady Russell. Stepped out of the first tackle. Pushed out of bounds by Budo. He gets eight, second and short. That's another missed tackle. No Damian Williams. Remember that. One of the more dynamic players in that secondary. It was Boodle a year ago. They gave up the 40-yard touchdown at about this time, about a minute and a half to go in the game. Here's that tight formation once again. They like to explode or misdirect out of it. Out of the pistol on second and two. Montez back to throw. Under pressure. Able to step out. Directing traffic. And now will throw it away. Third and two for Colorado with 218 left. Savvy play. We saw it on the last drive, right? Second and nine. Didn't take a sack. Threw it away. Converted on third and nine. Third and two. You're on schedule. Everything's available to you. Smart play to avoid and get rid of it. Here comes Fontenot. And it looks like he's short. Fourth down, less than a yard, coming up right at midfield. Got to go. Yep. 205 and counting, two timeouts for the Buffs. These are the situations that Mel Tucker has said he has prepared for before they've ever happened. These are the moments. This is the situational football he's been waiting his whole life to be the head man and run a team in charge of it. Running back is Fontenot. They tuck Montez under center. Quarterback sneak. Montez gets the first down. Dismuke in there, punch into the ball, trying to jar it loose. Montez holds on for dear life. Inside of a minute 30. Advantage of a 6'5", 230-pound quarterback. Just get those pads down and move the pile. And here we are again, nearly deja vu from a season ago. Still no Chenault on the field. Montez throwing back shoulder. That is caught by KD Nixon. Now Chenault comes in as the clock nears one minute. 
Beautiful job of getting the hands underneath and securing the catch. They run the ball, and Mangum has the first down. Flags all over the place with late substitutions from Nebraska. The illegal substitution. Defense. That penalty is declined. Result of the play is the first down. So you may be upset, but it is your job that you have to. That line judge is not looking to you. You have to get in his vision, and I think that's the conversation right there. I'm sorry, Scott, I'm doing my job. I'm looking down the line. If you get into my line of vision, I'll give you the timeout. But he didn't. Decline the penalty with a first down run for Mangum. First down and 10 at the Nebraska 26. Play action. Montez looking deep towards the end zone. Tony Brown. He got it. Touchdown Colorado. Did he indeed hang on and get his feet down? And what a throw. What a throw from the fifth year senior. Remember, it was Brown earlier on a go route. Feet are inbounds. Does he secure it all the way through contact with the ground? Clearly inbounds. Touchdown. And I love going back to the pro, the guy they call the consummate pro in their building. Remember, he had a go route in the first half, other end zone going the other way just off his hands. It's not Chanel. It's not KD. It's the entire team that it is going to take to beat this Nebraska crew in this building. And Montez, the belief in all of his personnel to give Brown the shot. And the senior delivered. You hold your breath. Extra point coming from Stefano. This game is tied. Tony Brown. The Texas Tech transfer goes up and gets it. And with 46 seconds left, all tied at 31. Well, Stefano has been so good today, not giving him any chances to bring it back. None more important than this one. All the way to the back of the end zone. So 46 seconds, one timeout. Adrian Martinez and the Huskers have it at the 25. Spielman, the motion man, on first and 10 of the 25. Seven in coverage for Colorado. Martinez rolling, heaves it to the sideline, and caught by Spielman for a gain of nine, 39 seconds. A couple things to remember here. Nebraska burned a timeout before they even ran one offensive play in the second half. Frost did not get the timeout there that he was looking for in that last possession. I think that ends up being a benefit here because everything's still very much available to you in the playbook. On second down, Martinez all day down the sideline, incomplete over the head of Noah. First time he's been targeted today. It's third and one. Washington, first down Huskers. You better get on that ball. Clock stops while they reset the chains. You better have another play called immediately. First down, Martinez to throw. He's going to take a shot. He's got one on one. That is picked off. Intercepted by Chris Miller. He's headed back the other way. Colorado's got it at the 41 with eight seconds left to play and one timeout. And a 32-year-old veteran kicker at their disposal. Wow. Adrian trying to just throw a jump ball, trying to give Noah the opportunity to win this one-on-one. -on -one. Makai Blackman, a savvy move. Gets his hands on Noah, does not allow Noah to go up for that ball. And does Blackman's knee stay off the ground here? Is he able to have the body control? That to not is under further review. And oh. that is no. 
Yeah, you saw that in real time, and with all that contact, thought, man, if he's able to keep that knee off the ground, this should be a fairly quick review. After further review, the interceptor's knee was down at the 15-yard line. It'll be Colorado's ball there, first and 10 at the 15-yard line. Please put 19 seconds on the game clock. I play this at home to go to OT. And Mel Tucker told us yesterday he didn't come into this season saying he wanted to be a riverboat gambler. Nope. And heck, when you're down 17 nothing coming out of the break, 31-31 with a chance to win it in overtime feels pretty darn good. So we had double overtime Army in Michigan to start the day on Fox. We've got overtime here in the 71st meeting of Nebraska and Colorado. <laughs> There's your game summary. What do you like from Colorado here in overtime? I like what you've done this entire second half. Be aggressive. Stretch the field. Don't get away from that jet sweep. And oh, by the way, when the game's on the line, get it to KD, LaVisca, or Tony. On first and 15, it's Fontenot with room off the left side. A block from Chennault. Spinning his way close to the sticks. And Fontenot has a first down. What a run. Do you remember that first half? That shut up. A big zero for rushing yards for Colorado. A Nebraska defense that was stifling, that was making every tackle. Barry's on the ground. Lee misses the tackle. Fontenot, yet another huge first down for the Buffs. This has been part of the run game emerging in the second half, too. The Wildcat was Chennault. From the 12, first and 10. Chennault gets drilled. That play blown up from the start by Khalil Davis. Yeah, an inside slant, an inside charge, and you can see Chenault favoring that arm once again. Didn't get a lot of touches a week ago against the Rams. He's gotten a whole bunch. He's going to be sore tomorrow. And you can see I love Mel Tucker there, just encouraging his star, knowing there will be ample time to still make a difference. Second down, 15. Five no motions out. Montez looking left side. He'll float one incomplete with a coverage from Cam Taylor Britt. He was looking for the freshman Stanley. Third and 15. That was danger. Oof. Danger, danger throwing late to the flat against that ball hawk. And there's Chenault back on the field. And you knew he would be. He is gutting it out. He's sore. But you've got to be available to your teammates when it matters the most. He will be here, lined up to the top of the formation on third down and 15. It's DiCaprio Buda defending him, the man that he beat for the game-winning score last year in Lincoln. Looking in Chenault's direction. End zone! Broken up! This time, a year later, Buda wins the battle. Wow. And it's fourth down. And call me surprised, he left that guy in a one-on-one -on -one situation with the safety not over the top. And this is one-on-one. -on -one. This is exactly what you just said, what you got a year ago. There's some contact. There absolutely is contact. But you know what? That same contact has been allowed all day long. Makai Blackman had his hands on the receiver, on his interception at the end of the game. They have let these guys play. And what a big pass breakup. Stefano from 35. Play clock down to one. They get it off, and Stefano is right down the middle. There is a flag down. Wow. Two fouls, both by the defense. Offside, defense. Running into the kicker, defense. Five-yard penalty, fourth down. And you would assume both decline. That's the right call. That's not roughing. That's running into. Fine. Yes. Try is the three point try successful. Right. It's fourth and 15. So both yeah, penalties there's, decline. There's. <laughs> that's a no brainer. You don't ever take those points off the board. And here in overtime, Brock, Colorado leads for the first time today. I mean, you have got to figure that number two, who was 
charged to be aggressive, who Scott Frost wanted and said publicly on Monday, when he runs it, I wanted him to run it like an eye back, just like Scott used to do. You have got to think he's going to call his own number here in overtime at some juncture. First play of the OT. It's Washington getting spun down by Terrence Lane. Big time play. And when you're 6'7", that's exactly what you want. You want that length and that mesh point, that decision-making process to be muddled and cloudy and Lang delivers. Beware of the tight ends as well. Back to Washington, waiting for a crease, bubbling to the outside, won't find room, and bumped out by Maddox. It's third down and long for Nebraska. Boy, and that containment on those edges has been so much better in the second half. Dominated in the first half for Scott Frost. But Maddox and Taylor and line stunts have been such a difference. And third and nine with a really difficult kicking situation. Isaac Armstrong, who's handling the kicking duties today, was good from about 42 during warm-ups. They're within that range right here. That was warm-ups. This is overtime. On third and nine, a low snap. Martinez recovers. He's set! Back at the 33. It's Mustafa Johnson. And it's fourth down at a mile. And they're going to try it with Armstrong. That low snap took the eyes away for a split second. He's got a curl route that he can't get to. And Mustafa Johnson put a gold star by that man. He has been a force in the second half. And how about this decision? Second career field goal attempt for Isaac Armstrong. From 48 yards. Looking for the tie. Stadium again, and we talked about the problematic kicking situation for Northwest for Nebraska in a sack, making this 50 plus. Those fans behind knew it from the instant it was off the foot. That's a tough spot for a punter to be in, tough spot for a team to be in, and I can't give that man enough credit. The adjustments he made, the guts he played with, the determination he had, and Coach Frost and crew are still looking for that first road win. But the kids believed. And up against it in this building that was pro Nebraska for so much. Well, let's turn Buffalo Nation in the end. They take their first lead of the day in overtime on James Stefano's field goal after trailing 17 nothing late in the third quarter. 34 31 the final score. We'll get you to State College for the Buffalo Penn State game. Hey, a high bar has been set, guys, in State College. A couple overtime games already today on Fox. What does the finale have in store?